Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create an animated logo slider like you see right here using only CSS. That's right, we're not gonna use any JavaScript at all, and we're just gonna leverage the power of CSS animations to create this infinite logo slider. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Oxygen and get started. Since this tutorial is not focused on design, I already have the page design set up here and we're not gonna cover all that. Instead, we're just gonna focus on this logo slider. So to get started, we need to drop in a div. And we want this div between the two divs that are already on the page. And I'm gonna do a little bit of styling as we go, but we might go back and tweak things later. Let's give this a class of logo-slider. And then within that, we need another div, which is gonna be called logo-slide. So let's put that class on there. Now this div needs to be set to 100% width. And then within there, we can put our logo. So the way I like to do this is I'm gonna drop in a div for each logo, and I'm actually going to give it a class. So we'll just call it logo div. And this needs to be set to a percentage width based on how many logos you're gonna have. So we're gonna have five, so we'll set our width to 20%. Now you can see if we duplicate this a few times, one, two, three, four, five, and then set that logo slide div to lay things out horizontally. You can see they fill up the full width of that div, which is exactly what we want. Let's go ahead and drop in some images here. These will be our logos. So we will drop in and use the media library and grab these logos, which I got from logoipsum.com, which is super handy for placeholder logos. And on this logo div, we're definitely gonna wanna center everything within that div and probably set its height to something appropriate for the images we're gonna be using. So for this example, I'll probably do uh, 100 pixels. And then we can just duplicate this image a couple of times and drag those over where they belong. One, two, three. And make sure you're dropping it in that logo div that we created, and four. So now let's just swap these logos out for some different ones so we're not just repeating the same logo over and over. Now let's grab this one and jump in and swap this one out as well. And then the final one. We'll browse and pick that last one. So that's the basic structure of our logo slider. Now, what we're gonna need to do next is gonna involve some code. But first, let's give this logo slider div a background color. So let's just give it a background color of white. And then let's add a code block within that div. And we'll go to PHP and HTML and just clear that out with a comment so that we don't have any code actually being output visibly. And then everything we're doing for this is gonna be done within the CSS tab here. Now it's important that we remember the classes that we set up. So we have logo-slider, logo-slide, and then logo-div. So we're gonna be using those in our CSS. So let's go ahead and drop those in, logo-slider. I like to just drop in my classes when I first start so that I remember which classes to use. Slide, and then logo-div. And first things first, I'm just gonna slap my gradient code in here on the body so that we get that nice gradient in the background on the front end. And then we'll be moving on to the interesting parts of this. So the first thing we wanna do is the CSS changes we're gonna be making to these, we don't necessarily want to be visible in the builder because it will make them hard to work with. So what we're gonna do is add a selector body colon not dot ng dash scope. So this will only apply when the body does not have the ng-scope class, which it always does in the builder. So this helps us to ensure that the CSS only applies on the front end. Now I'm pretty sure that some of the declarations we're gonna make on this logo slider element will not be specific enough to override some of the defaults. So what we're gonna do is use the is selector. This allows us to pass in a group of selectors, but the nice part about is, is that if one of these selectors in the group is invalid, it still works on the ones that are valid, and it uses the specificity of the most specific selector in the group. So to increase the specificity of our .logo-slider class selector, we can just add an ID selector like inc spec. 
And now that class selector will basically be applied as if it were an ID as far as specificity is concerned. Now we're gonna do a few things on the front end. We're gonna to wanna to set the flex direction to row, the align items to center, overflow to hidden, position to relative, and the height to 100 pixels. So let's just take a look on the front end and make sure everything is kind of going in the right direction. I like to peek on the front end periodically as I work. So, so far, so good. Let's jump back over here and we're gonna set up a couple of CSS variables. If you're not familiar with CSS variables or custom properties, they're basically a way for you to create a kind of placeholder for a value and you can then use that placeholder in place of the hard-coded value, which is nice if you wanna use the same value across multiple locations in your CSS and you don't wanna to have to change it multiple times if you do change it. So we're gonna drop in a CSS variable called animation speed, and this is gonna be 30 seconds. And let me just swap my editor theme here to make it a bit more visible. And we're gonna create another variable called animation delay. This is really, really important for this effect that we're doing we need an animation delay that's equal to half of our animation speed. So we can use the CSS function calc. So we're gonna do calc, and then within that, we're gonna pass in the variable animation speed, and we're gonna divide it by two, which we just do with a forward slash there. These are gonna be very instrumental in making everything work as expected and getting that infinite looping effect. Now, before we go too much further, I do wanna go down here and set up a couple of CSS animations. So we're gonna do at keyframes, and we're gonna name this slide logo. And we're gonna go from transform translate X 100%, which will move the element just off the right side of the screen. And we're gonna go to transform, translate X negative 100%, which will move it just off the left side of the screen. So it's traversing from just out of sight on the right side of the viewport to just out of sight on the left side of the viewport. Now what we need to do is we need to add some styles to our logo slide, which is the div that contains all of our logos. First, we're gonna set it to flex shrink zero. And we do wanna add this body not ng scope on this as well so that we don't end up with any wonky styles in the builder. We're gonna absolutely position this. So we're gonna go position absolute. Then we get into the animation bit. So let's do animation name. This is where we pass in the name of the animation we just set up with the at keyframes down below. So the name is slide logo. Then animation dash duration is gonna take that animation speed variable that we set up. So to use a variable that's been declared, you can do var open parentheses dash dash animation speed and then close the parentheses there. And that will essentially use the value that's defined up here where we declared that variable. Now we're gonna change the animation timing function to linear. If you use easing, the timing won't be quite right for it to look like an infinite loop, so we have to use linear here. And then animation iteration count is gonna be infinite. This gives us our looping effect. So let's go ahead and just see what this looks like currently with those settings. You can see that the logo div starts off the right side of the screen and is gonna go ahead and scroll to the left. Now, this looks pretty good if you just want one set of logos and don't want the infinite looping effect because as you'll see, once it goes ahead and slides off the left side of the screen, we're gonna have this bit of a gap, but it will go ahead and flow right back into the screen again from the right. So let's see, and right here, it should start in from the right side of the screen again. Now, to get the infinite effect, we need another logo div that's gonna fill that gap. So let's go back into our builder and take a look at what we need to do next. Basically, what we need to do here is we need a second selector here. So we're gonna do the same uh, body not ng scope logo slide, and then we're gonna look for a logo dash slide element with a class of delay. And if it has this class of delay, 
we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to set it to transform translate X 100% by default, which will go ahead and get it off the screen. And then we're going to set it to animation name. And we're going to use the same animation for both of these. So slide logo. And then here's the key part, the animation dash delay. Remember when I said we need an animation delay that's exactly half of the animation speed. This is what gets us our infinite looping effect. So the nice thing is we've already set up our variable up above on the logo dash slider selector. So we can use that variable here, var dash dash animation delay. And because we're using the CSS calc function, it's just doing all the math for us. And we should end up with about a 15 second animation delay. Now to see this thing in action, we need to actually have two of these logo slide divs. And then the second one needs to have a class of delay. So let's add that class. And if we save this and jump up to the front end, we should see that we no longer have this white gap between loops. So let's refresh. And here comes the first set of logos within that first logo slide div. And it's going to go ahead and progress as soon as the page loads. And it'll just continue going until it gets all the way off the left side of the screen. But as you can see, we no longer have a gap. This set right here is the second set of logos. Let's just go ahead and add a style to this second set of logos here. Uh, we can use the delay selector. Let's just add a background color of uh, a light pink here so that you can really see what's happening. So let's go up here and refresh. And again, we'll see that first set of logos come in and that's just the whole logo div just moving left. And we're using transform translate X. So these animations are more performant. We don't want to use margins and paddings and things when we're animating them. Now you can see that second logo div comes in. That's the one with the pink background. And as it comes in and fills the screen, the first one is going to move off the screen. Because of the CSS animation we have set up, as soon as the first one's off the screen, boom, it moves over to the right side of the screen and continues the cycle. So that's how you end up with this infinite looping effect using just a CSS animation. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to create a CSS only infinite scrolling logo slider using Oxygen and some CSS. Thank you very much for watching.